Oh, we're gonna get sunburned today. The tree is growing the suckers for a reason. Why would we cut them off? It's like, it's like, you know, taking one of the, the factors in your favor away from the tree. So and that's Taliesin over there, Frank Lloyd Wright. There's a uh, Romeo and Juliet tower. Can't quite see the view. It's a little close. I'd have to put my reading glasses on to see the view. I can see the red blinking light though. Okay. We're gonna protect these. So my saw will be safe right there, right? And having the camera out front here, I could even change the angle if I wanted to. But now I see why I wasn't getting the view a lot of times. You gotta look up a lot higher. You don't account for, when you're looking up, your eyes are, you know, looking up <laughs> in your head. It's not all your neck. But the camera, it's all neck movement. So if your neck doesn't go up and I'm glancing up with my eyes, I'm not getting the view with the camera. So this would be nice. I'll be able to, you know, tilt the camera up, make sure I'm seeing the right thing. We might be doing this stuff here too. Not today. We, uh, we don't do our stumps in the winter. We like to dig out the flare. You get a much better finish. You salvage a bunch of native soil for the backfill. This works out well. So consequently we Did I walk around the tree with a rope attached to my hip? Crazy. I had it attached to the wrong hip. That wasn't going to be fun to have it over there. Well, I can probably climb this like I do a white pine. Just advance my climbing line. All right. Oh, I see somebody arrived coming to observe us. Why did I think 15 degrees was, was cold? Too many stinking suckers. Just do it one at a time then. All right.
get sunburned today. March, big sunburn month for those of us working outside, especially when there's snow. A March sun is a September sun. It's pretty, uh, it's much more direct than a winter sun. That looks like an easy one to get over. Get it whipped down here like that. All right, they just recalled that little pulley. Ouch. And this big Dan is way more secure than that little pulley. I can choke on that any old which way I want. The troops coming. I'm gonna have to turn on my intercom soon. My battery level's low, so let's talk about the plan. <laughs> Hour and a half drive, I can't charge my battery. That's crazy. Ah, uh, I'm just gonna drop cut stuff. You can keep it clear. I am gonna have to rig like this little stuff just to protect the shrubs. So pull a few of these out of the way quick. I'll pull, pull them out straight. You could you could sling them or stack them up and and pinch them with one grapple. I'll let you pull these out first. Hmm, I wonder if I can just manhandle these. This one I probably can. Watch how you grab these, and you gotta think about your wrist as it comes over. How's it gonna bind your wrist? <laughs> Especially like this one, like I might grab up here, and then my wrist won't bend. Boy. Ugh. So a couple techniques here of you know letting the hinge catch some of your load when you're hand rigging stuff like that and then making sure you're like my thumbs are getting arthritic now uh, you know they're sore like even today they're sore and it's probably largely do with gripping stuff like that and then having stuff twist on my thumb you get two more pieces out of there so they don't get tangled this is a pretty crooked branching ash <laughs> they're gonna hold on to each other pretty well which would be good for dragging them out all right making a drop cut two in a row <laughs>
these ash trees are just suckering machines trying to survive we were trimming some i gotta call the client in fact they were called back and they go oh i don't like all the suckers on the ash well we're treating the ash but you know treating the ash trees still get infested and the defense mechanism of the ash against the boar is to produce suckers in the area where boars are active so that there's more energy to compartmentalize the damage the boars are doing. So if you preserve them, So if you're preserving an ash tree by treating it for your client and and they want you to cut all the suckers off because they're just that type of person that wants their tree all clean the tree is growing the suckers for a reason why would we cut them off it's like it's like you know taking one of the the factors in your favor away from the tree don't take and same thing with tree pruning you know don't take all of the suckers off when pruning a tree take take some but leave some they're they're producing and storing starch in that area of the tree prune a tree kind of two-thirds of the height of the tree should be some kind of canopy right and then if you move that down to the branch two-thirds of that branch should be you know producing energy so you should have little branchlets along along that branch two-thirds of the way out so if you're all the way out at the end that's lion's tailing and you know now the, now all the energy is produced out there it's got to translocate all those all that starch all the way down to store it that's a lot of energy just to move energy to different parts of the plant if you leave branches along the branch it's it's got storage all along that branch it's you got to think of the whole system when you're pruning okay back to removing oh that sun is intense i can feel that on my face <clears throat> get out of my life you can see i'm not very appreciative of things that can be, compete with me in my life. Brand new sling from gameoftrees.com. These are uh, from All Gear. Okay. All Gear. End to end, 7,000 pounds. Basket, 10,000 pounds. Choke is probably 2,500. Choke is usually one fourth. Although August Haneke did some, some testing of the choke and found it to be much stronger than, than intuitively thought of. So if you go one, one fourth on the choke, 2,500 pounds. I mean, 2,500 pounds, that's a lot on this sling. Pretty good. I usually don't test them to that degree. All right, hand rig. Okay, I could take both of these down at once. I think I will. I'll let Mike. I'll let Mike trim them down so he can utilize that saw that he's warming up. He likes. 
He likes the trim saw with that 592. All right, we're ready for that rig. If I had notched it, it wouldn't have held on, maybe. But when I don't care about preservation here, I don't care if that tears. That makes a good, usually predictable hinge. Except it held on there in that circumstance. Can't believe I drove all the way out here and didn't charge my helmet. But at least you don't have to listen to me talk to you now mark stuve is starting to call me hollywood oh yeah hollywood <laughs> content producer extraordinaire yeah hey i'm having fun <sighs> Almost never had more fun in my career than I'm having right now. It's a good time. Oh, the world's exciting. Crazy stuff happening. Busy working below me. Just tickle their heads with this. Advance my rope here. Oh, these suckers. Crazy. win some people say I'm a competitive personality but I don't know I don't think they know what they're talking about I am hot I could have wore my lighter jacket I yeah, wouldn't need this sweatshirt I got an underarm on and then a which would have been adequate. Stand clear, Mike. Now I kind of cut to try to leave this side of the hinge last. I mean, it didn't matter, it's about equal across, but I didn't want to go in this way to hit the bushes. One more little one. Oh, that almost 
blew my other knee out. That was crazy. I had, whoa! Good old lanyard. Missed my hook. And these, you know, Muppet, Muppet hands. Tell you, winter hazards. All right, we got one drop cut over here too, Mike. Oh, thought I had a battery saw. We got a little rig, I have to move that one and then we got a rig. weight there <coughs> pulling straight away so then I made it ended up being a brake cut I should have pushed it before I made that last little cut but very light branch so it wasn't any issue but you know you gotta think about that you know so it wasn't going because it was kind of had a back lead like this and I should have just pushed it. I had enough cut. I could have just pushed it off. And I decided to, you know, try to take a little bit more hinge. Well, I didn't have <laughs> any more hinge to take. Get back on the front side of this lean. That's way more comfortable. No. Bring all the rope over here. Since I don't have a mic, let's not have that running. It's hard enough to communicate. We're so accustomed to having our microphones. And then, you know, the boss forgets to charge it. On a long commute, you know. We're, we're like over an hour away from the shop. And I gotta forget. Okay, I think I can guide this down. I'm gonna open up this notch a little bit. Okay, I want this to fall, and then I wanna be able to cut it free. Because I didn't want it coming all the way over and then flipping, maybe the butt going over to that. So I wanted it, I wanted it to come this way, away from that red bud. I knew the maple branch would be okay. But then I wanted to be able to erase the hinge and let it drop before the butt got too far and get the flip over. Okay, well I could. Drop this little guy right there. Wasn't 
too risky for my saw. Okay. We're gonna protect these so my saw will be safe right there, right? You know, you, you make those decisions. Oh, my saw will be safe here. Is it? Is it really? <laughs> Is it really safe from hammage? I don't know. Already made one saw mistake today. You know, that's the deal. We never fully arrive. On any given day, we have a potential for a mistake. You know, some kind of mistake. Take this off. Bring it up here. So the guys are working for the same organization. I think I'm gonna do something like this. Stand clear. up here are pretty brittle but I'm not I'm not afraid of this bowl you know this isn't going anywhere the base is solid you know if I were if I were tied on to something up there that'd be sketchy because these can be brittle but to be on this is uh, is is fine and then you know, rigging in a crotch like that. I mean, that's, that's solid. It's all compression force through here. We can take this piece off. And I'll take all those off. And I'll probably go right up to that crotch right there and, and rig this stuff off. And then just, then I just have to make brake cuts. We could pull a big piece off this way, but I, you know, on an ash tree, I don't wanna be up here and have a machine pulling something off of this. You know, that just doesn't scream prudent <laughs> to me. So, you know, I'm already up here. Uh, pretty safe structure on this tree with the central trunk. And I can just work it down. I've got, I've got the time on it. Now I can feel this trunk moving, you know? Uh, we, we talked about leaving lower branches on. If this was, if this was a sketchy base, like the base of this tree is not my, my sketchy part on this. The dangerous part of this tree is this upper canopy. There would be a possible breakout. Uh, the whole bowl on this is not, but I can feel the whole thing moving. If I'd have left lower branches on down there, 
Ah, this would be very stable feeling. Right now it's swaying this way and that way. Uh, so if, if my intent, like the other day in that, you might not have seen that video yet, but it's coming. Uh, that big dead oak, well, it wasn't dead, <laughs> but it was decayed. <coughs> and the integrity of the trunk was in question. So in that regard, I leave lower branches on. Now, I don't have to rig these. We already got a twig mess, so. All right, I'll let him grab one more out of there. Okay, a couple drop cuts coming, Mike. Of course, if I rig them. Just drop this little guy. Yeah, see it? Boom, boom, boom. Breaks into little pieces. Why don't we? Why don't we avoid those little pieces? Mike, little rig. Just use it for friction. Just like, like a gremlin got involved. That hurt. <laughs> Did you see that? I like, I pulled it up and it created a half hitch on my hand. A round turn. It just crunched my hand with a dynamic bounce. Wow. That could have been a freak accident. Well, Kevin's got downtime, broke his hand. Got it caught in a rig, a rig that I could lift, but I pulled it up and then it bounced onto my hand with a, and of course you create a round turn and there's probably, probably some kind of mechanical advantage <laughs> with that round turn working on your, working on your bone structure. That's no good. I think I can get my rigging rope up a little higher. Wow, that sun is intense. Summertime's coming. Stubs. Let it run. Oh, wow. Just let it turn over. There we go. Wow, what a mess. We gotta get a better side of this world here. This is crazy. Let go of the rope. I am hot and sweaty. Now it's like 20 degrees probably. Sun is shining, so I've got that. 
and dead ash working against me. Ouch. Oh, is my battery dead? Didn't even get that. No, my battery's on. I just looked up. I can see my blinking light. Oh, that was good. Now, I want this to go the other way. You throw the carabiner first, you hold the sling back with the rope, and then it goes right through there. Little trick. Okay, I think I'm going to tip that off that way. So I'm going to cut off all this little stuff. You bounced right around those stubs. Now oh, I think these will miss this stub. I can leave that stub. <laughs> I can leave that stub. What Arbor says that. I can leave that stub. You're asking for it. Okay, I'm gonna be up here pretty tall on this. We're getting into the sketchy wood. I don't have any wind. Okay, let's see here. Drop cut this. hillside over there somebody told me in my other video for Taliesin that's Taliesin over there Frank Lloyd Wright there's a Romeo and Juliet tower this was the school the architectural school and then the main residence is way over there but that bare hillside over there is a bluff prairie it's actually a natural natural uh, mystic pre preserve I, th I think Somebody told me that. I didn't memorize what they said. Sorry. I should have that information at the tip of my mind. But that's not like a clear cut forest thing. That's a bluff prairie grass, believe it or not, is something that somebody is thinking about preserving. I was on a project years and years ago to clear a bluff side for bluff prairie grass. There's certain species that grow on the bluff side. 
That's where I found the 286 year old cedar that I cut down, the invasive red cedar. But Two hundred and eighty-six years old. We preserved an old-growth glade on that project, but some of these bluff sides along the river uh, that are, have difficult access have some really old, old-growth cedars and other trees. All right, little guy. Let it run. Don't pull it. Okay, pull it tight. I take it back, pull it tight. There we go. All right, that felt good. Okay, I'm gonna go up. A little bit. I don't want to get too high up on this on this bowl, but we're probably fine right here. Probably. Probably okay. I mean see there's pretty good flexibility in that little twig. So I'm probably okay. Come on, go through there. There we go. Fifteen degrees when we got here. He leaves his gloves in the truck. Yeah, it's a sunny day. Uh, he needs gloves. The rigs, the rigs will warm my hands. <laughs> uh, he's got durable hands. He hasn't burned them yet. Tough to get it down here with these twigs. Got it. We're gonna pull it off. The whole top's coming, Mike. crispy kringle <laughs> but it's down that's why we rigged the dead ash because it's just a bunch of sticks but you know it's down and that was that was the safest way to do that i wanted to get up high enough to do like a hand a hand pull because I didn't want to put a machine. They even started pulling, you know, before I cut the hinge. And if you do that with a machine, you know, maybe it breaks below me or something crazy. Look at that. Ugh. Just back cut this off. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, I'll make a break cut here. So I cut most of the way through. And that allowed it to sit a little bit on that curve. I could see it move. I knew I had enough. Now I just gotta carefully break this. Oh, it doesn't want to carefully break. <laughs> what wasn't broken is now. <laughs> <laughs> the next one goes on that pile of brush. Maybe I can miss it. over be flat and the stump will be up. Let's see if I can call that shot. Okay. I'm gonna cut a smaller notch and I'll push it off. kind of pulling the saw out to, to get an eye on this. Okay, put this below. And I can safely pull up on this. Oh, nice. I called it. That stuff is up. Landed flat. Get off of these stubs. So again, about one fifth of your height and the natural gravity drop of the log will flip over and land flat. About one fifth, a little shy of one fifth, like 18%. One fifth would be 20% of your height. All right, so this one, I can go just below this and I'll be about that height. I'm a little shorter than my last one. The trunk's a little shorter. So I'll make my notch right here. Okay, I could use a bigger saw right now, but this will work. Oh, almost got a tear. Like dead ash. I would not think that with dead ash. I wasn't even a concern. And look what it did. So there's still some moisture left in here. You know, I had this side, basically it was brake cutting off of there and this was my hinge. But then this little bit held on, right in the sapwood. So there's still a little moisture here. So, I mean, I would never think I would have to side curve a dead ash. Look at that. Fooled, fooled again, but without consequence. 
still landed flat so it didn't hold it that long it just was a little little twist turned it over here you know got it closer to the trunk because it held on longer all right i'll we'll do one more i wonder if i got the fuel to get around I'm gonna cut a shallow notch because I got a small saw. Uh -oh. the consequence of my baby notch I gotta push boom close to flat so you see it really isn't the bigness of the notch that makes it land flat it's the length of the piece okay I think we'll pull the rest of this over Did they stuff my rope? Well, we could pull it over with my climbing line. I know. It's just going to be a hand pull. Don't worry. Don't worry, melancholies. It'll all be fine. Well, Brandon can come and grab this log and kind of put it out there for a little lander. Yeah. Yeah, I just asked him to come in here and make a grab. Uh, let's let's rake up this area quick before we drop the log. Did you want some of them logs right there? Yeah, we'll get we'll put that one right there. These, these can go right here. Kill, kill that, kill that, Brandon. Let's kill the noise pollution for a while. Can I borrow the 592? Well, these aren't exactly lined up with the trunk, but I think I can aim towards them. Okay, I didn't bring my felon axe. You got the shebango and you got a wedge in your back pocket, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Shebango. Mitch Zenobi likes these. They're nice. They're very durable. Yeah, and you know, it's a light handle. It's kind of hollow, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're a real, they're a real axe. Well, they're technically a splitting. Yeah, they got a splitting profile there. But I like because of the length and it's got a good head on it too. Yeah, and it's about four, four pound head. Yep. And the hook. Oh, on the handle, yeah. So like a lot of times, like, you know, you'll set a wedge. You'll yep. sit here and look at and kind of like this. Sure. You don't worry about that handle flying out of your hand. Right, you get that little angled. All right, choke this bad boy. Oh, we got a nice little mound for the wrap handle. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
little side lean to the trunk here. So I think it lands in the middle here somewhere. an inch and a half over here sorry guys that's all right Terry, you have the you have the two strongest guys with you yeah you got the two strongest guys on the crew i didn't even move my feet i just went like this yeah <laughs> just kept gathering it in i'm like uh, well we'll leave the wood right up here for him we can probably clean up this wood a little bit Take the twigs off. Yeah, I was in a hurry. Yeah, I'll get I'll get my little saw going. Tell Brandon to stop spinning on the grass. <laughs> All right, they're in need of us. Well, at least they got a a loader around here. They aren't going to have any trouble coming and getting this wood. All right, we come back to grind the sump. Another sled or two of brush and we're done. Well, beautiful area out here. This is Savannah Institute. And uh, I think they got visitation and stuff out here during the seasonal hours. You can look them up probably provide a link in the in the description this is a beautiful day out here with Mike and Brandon maybe we'll be out here again sometime now that we know them do some pruning this is a big old tree walnut that's a fat old walnut yes indeed Open grown, been growing in this farmyard for a long time. It's like 40 inches diameter. There's some high grade walnut out in this area in the woods. So they got a little cattle operation out here. Got some nice bales of hay put up. We got a nice, nice yard. Over here, take a look. Yeah, look at this. Got a little shoot area. Load them up, ship them out. Uh, not too bad. Nice little operation. Small time beef. So it's a functioning farm still at the Savannah Institute. We got just a little bit left to clean up and then go join the other guys at another property owned by the Savannah Institute. So they're taking down five trees, a, a diseased American elm and three Siberian elms. 
four Siberian elms. So keep them trees, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Playing the game of trees.